Good to see you. You can be seated. Wow, so cool to see so many people coming to church. Praise God. Every time I come here, I'm blown away with all the stuff you guys do. I mean, uh, your expectations and invitation for God to move, preaching Jesus, everyone, everywhere, every day, all about him. If he be lifted up, he'll draw all men unto him. Hallelujah. Man, you sent such a, uh, um, there, there's a, a, an impartation day. Uh, we'll get into end times, but there's something about a grace here today to just get get bold and get strong and get strength from heaven. Isn't it something you can come to church, you could have maybe had a, a weary week or, you know, just dealing with all kinds of stuff, and come into church, worshiping God changes you, and then all of a sudden hearing the word of God, the strength that's in the incorruptible seed, when it's sown, it grows up and it becomes. Hallelujah. So look at this whole group in Alma, Arkansas, that uh, God has you uh, to be a, 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 a kind of a, a spearhead of, of different thought patterns. And uh, man, I heard the Holy Ghost saying things to me as we're going this morning about several different ones of you, and I believe I'll we'll see if we get into some of that now or later, but man, it's just wonderful, wonderful times. I mean, haven't you seen Israel be surrounded all <laughs> by all these nations wanting to kill it? Uh, Last October, I guess this is the 401st day of that war, and uh, we were there a few months after it was. Michelle was there doing a prayer meeting there in Jerusalem, and I was trying to meet my buddy Ronnie, and man, they showed us video of how Hamas came in and killed so many people in the neighborhood. It was so bad that the Israeli soldiers thought it was a drill and, and stood there and saying hi to them, and they got killed while they were saying hi to them. They were supposed to shoot them, so... I mean, it's just a weird deal to have literally what heaven said you'd see just before the coming of the Lord. So we're, we're extremely close to Jesus coming back. Uh, it should get a little bit more excited than that, but we're, we're, we are. I feel like, oh, what, whatever, Joe, that's good. No, no, this, this is it. I mean, I mean this, people say, well, I've heard that all my life. That's exactly right. You have, because the Bible said there'd be scoffers in the last days. And they say, well, where is the promise of his coming? We've been hearing that all of our lives. These things continue as they did from the beginning. And he said, for this they are willingly ignorant. And one translation says, stupid on purpose. <laughs> so if people have, have chosen, you're around people all the time that go, oh, I don't believe the Lord's coming back. Well, we got so much happening right now pointing to it that it makes it, makes the, not pressure get put on you, but uh, if you're in a race and you see the finish line, I've never seen a runner go, now what is that right there? I've never seen that. No, <laughs> runners know what the finish line looks like. <laughs> And see, if, if you don't get into end-time preaching, you won't know what the finish line looks like. Right. So you make adjustments. I mean, I, I'm a college football freak, and I was watching yesterday. I was screaming at the TV in my hotel room because the quarterback was looking like he wasn't looking at the play clock. And I'm like, hello. Ah! And I realized I'm screaming in the hotel room, and it didn't help at all. But anyway, <laughs> felt good. It's sure good to be with you. I, I just blessed to be back. I cannot believe Colleen's sister came to Tulsa. The, on, this is the only weekend she came there, so Colleen couldn't be here. But I got my sister Michelle, my brother-in-law John. I got Zach just got out of prison. God, we're so glad you're out. <laughs> and, and look at Sarah and Amelia. You guys, I still can't believe you guys are all here. So thank you all for coming. And I know the Lord has great things for you. It's, a, it's just, I, I treat them as family because they are family, but I look at the grace on their lives and and different things you were talking about in Israel. I was sitting there, someone was asking them some questions about what all they're doing. And uh, I just sat there, I thought, oh dear, God, Jesus is just about to come back. Because they're doing so much stuff, it just kind of scares you. But they're over in charge of Middle East, Africa, Europe. Uh, uh, just a 400 million emails. How many emails do you get? You were telling that guy, he goes, hey, God, I get a, like a million emails. He goes, no, you don't. And he got on your computer, he goes, uh, yeah, you do. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Now, these are just great days, just wonderful days, wonderful days to see the setup for the king to come back. Isn't that wild that you could literally be living and watching it all come together, and you put the pieces together, and you go, oh, my God, I'm about to see Jesus face to face. It's remarkable and exciting. So uh, these are days of, uh, you, could, you could call it this way, acceleration of ideas to get the message out in such a short period of time. And, and, and as we, we were standing there, I, I heard the Lord saying this to me uh, about, about Pastor Nate Devin about your church here. 
It's, it's almost like a blueprint will be given to you uh, so that things can, the, not only will the speed of it take, take a whole new level, but the uh, implementation of it will. It'll be so different and so wild. You'll go, I, you'll go, I would have never have thought in all my life it could be done like this. That's how unusual it'll be. It'll be so unusual, you'll, just go, you'll shake your head and go, Lord, you, are you serious about this? <laughs> you know? So some wonderful things are coming. And it's really things that you cried out from your own heart. I can hear you saying those things to the Lord. Lord, if we'll do this, if we'll, we, if we'll give it our all and push that hard, what will you do to back it? And the Lord wants me to tell you, he'll back it. He'll back it. And you watch. It'll be not just with signs and wonders, not just with divers' miracles, but with families on fire for God, the glory of the Lord on children, the glory of the Lord on the youth. And when you start getting the glory of God on the youth, you know the Lord's moving. Come on, amen. And I heard this for John and Michelle. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm reluctant to prophesy over them because they're family, but, and I, 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 I say I know some of the stuff they're doing, or I really don't. They're doing so much stuff I can't keep up with it. But uh, you watch in 90 days, there'll be, there'll be something come to you just as radical as it was when we were in that, in that Italian meeting with, with Pastor Hagen and Mark Brzee. I'll never forget that as long as I live. The Communist Party was having a, having a convention there, and they were smoking so many cigarettes. The whole hotel smelled like one big cigarette smoke. But, but God gave you some stuff for, for that whole situation there. And it was transforming in how God could get the message out all over Europe. What's coming in the next 90 days will make that seem like just peanuts. You'll go, you'll go there, how in the world is this going to happen? But God will show you how to do it, and it'll be cool, and it'll be a blessing to you. And if, and if, I'm, if I, that doesn't happen, you can go, you're, you missed it, Joe. And Zach's going to be blessed. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I see you. No. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Grab your Bibles, and uh, you just turn wherever you think you ought to turn. We'll see if you're flowing. Praise the Lord. I want to give you a couple of testimonies as we get into this. Go to Luke chapter 21. because I, I have my, my heart is full with what to get into today because there's some things that I know the Lord wants to cover. So uh, we'll have a good time getting in the Word. You know, we're all Word people. And it's amazing how the Word shows us where we are in time. Amen. In other words, I, I don't have to hear, I mean, I like good preachers and all that, but there's something about the Scripture uh, Pastor Nate even said it. The Bible says you're blessed when you read the book of Revelation. The whole thing about what's happening right now is oftentimes uh, people, a lady will walk up to me after service and go, you know what, I've been lied to my entire life. They're crying. I, I thought it was going to be bad news about the coming of the Lord. There is no bad news about the coming of the Lord. If you hear end time preaching and it scares you, it's not Bible. I have a friend of mine who has a huge church. He says, you know what? I can't preach on the coming of the Lord anymore because it, it scares my people. I said, well, then you're preaching it wrong. Because there's something about hearing how close you are. It just kind of gets, a, I don't want to say it this way, but kind of it jerks the slack out of everything. If you thought he was coming tomorrow, I guarantee you'd live differently today. Amen? That went over good. Good night, everybody. Drive safely. Amen. Start the car. I'll be right there. <laughs> No, these are, these are days of some, of, of some completion. These are days of things coming to pass in a short period of time. It's just a wild time to be on the planet where we get to visualize the plan of God, watching Lucifer try to annihilate Israel to take out God's family, and he can't do it. And we're, we're sitting here watching it all play out, so there's things that we have to do as a church, things we have to do as individuals, because it's going to get more uh, bolder and bolder and more out front, and you see it. I mean, you had CBS last week. The CBS, are, in our country, the CBS News told their reporters, don't say that Jerusalem is in Israel. Okay, so here, if that, that, that mentality is so weird. That's, what, that's the mindset that's going on right now in the world. Don't say that Jerusalem is in Israel. Hmm, that's weird. So that's what you're dealing with, because the Bible says the Antichrist is going to try to change dates and times and seasons. So there's all these things coming to a head here right before we leave. But the exciting thing about the church is it's explosive. I, that's the only word I can come up with is explosive. What, what will happen when all of a sudden you have 10,000 people come in uh, and you've got to have police uh, taking care of the cars coming in. You've got cars everywhere. You've got people coming. Just, just supernatural explosions right here before we leave the planet. Let's pray and we'll, we'll get right into the word. Father, we thank you. We thank you for sending Jesus to die for us. We're in awe that you, you let yourself be beaten, Lord. 
How could you be that kind to die for us? And we thank you for the resurrection. Help us walk in the full measure of everything that you gave us 2,000 years ago. And we are mindful that you overcame death, hell, and the grave. That you are the king of all. You are the Lord of all. Everything is subject to you. So, So be magnified this morning. Be glorified this morning in all of our lives, Lord. Thank you for what you did for us 2,000 years ago. And Lord, we thank you for insight into your plan today, that we know, we'll know right where we are in time so that we make adjustments and make alterations to accelerate in your plan. We thank you for it, Jesus. We see you this morning high and lifted up with your train filling the temple. We thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' wonderful name, and everybody said amen. You know, I'd like to give you a couple testimonies real quick because I want to ask if there's this one guy here a little bit later, but uh, just crazy things happen even preaching on end times. I was preaching in Mattoon, Illinois. I probably told you this before. I had a word of knowledge that someone had a metal plate in their head, and I just called it out and said, you're healed because I have weird words of knowledge. You know, I saw a woman fly fishing one time, catch the hook in her eye. Bartlesville saw a woman get poked in the eye with a fork. Uh, just bizarre stuff. I saw uh, in your church in Terre Haute, saw a, a, a little kid with a gash on their tongue. Uh, this little boy stuck his tongue out, and a snapping turtle caught his tongue and ripped it right down the middle. I saw the young lady that was in your You don't even know this. In your church in Terre Haute, had big Coke bottle glasses. Her little girl got healed. She went to Ramah, and guess what she did? She was a part of getting the chips ready for Israel's uh, Iron Dome. Isn't that wild? Come out of your church it, 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 responsible for that and got the chips so the Iron Domes would work the day before the October 7th attack. Well, she got healed. Her eyes got healed, and she invited all these kids to the meetings. really cool. But you know what? I was in Mattoon, and I said, there's someone here. you got a metal plate in your head, and you're being healed. Didn't even think anything about it. Finished the service. Ed and Mary Nell Stevens are the pastor's name. We came right down to the front after the service. This lady comes walking up to me, and she goes, uh, she goes I got a loose screw. I said, excuse me? She goes, no, no, I, I, I have a loose screw. I said, what, what do you mean? She goes, no, I have a bolt in my head, and it's on this metal plate. And I said, well, how do you know it's loose? She goes, I can feel it moving around in my head. And she said, when you call that out, I felt it tighten down in my head. <laughs> I'm like, you know, the Lord will even fix your loose screw if you got one. Praise the Lord. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. Very crazy. I was in... Uh, Oh, gosh, a lady walked up to me in Boston. She came up to me, this is about 15 years ago. She walks up to me, she said, do you remember being at uh, Tom Pete's church in, in Concord, New Hampshire, 25 years ago? I said, no. I said, I've been there many times, so I've uh, enjoyed going there. She said, well, you had a word of knowledge one night that someone had damage in their fingernails. And she said, this was all new to me, so I was afraid to go down. She said, I had no fingernail on my ring finger here. I, she goes, do you remember? I go, no. She goes, well, you called everybody down, and as everybody was there, you said, you know what? None of you are the ones I'm looking for, but I'll pray for you in faith. You know how you can, you can believe through faith just like you would when it's gifts in operation. But this lady didn't go down. She was afraid to. This is what she told me. She said two days later, she said, Lord, I'm sorry. I didn't go down to get my fingernail healed. Uh, is it okay if I get it now? Right then, her fingernail grew in. That night, her boyfriend put a ring on her finger and asked her to marry him. I preach in their church. It's John and, and, and Debbie Sanborn in Lyconia, uh, New Hampshire. They're pastoring a church now. God's so cool, he wants you to have a ring on your finger when you get married. I mean, have a nail on your finger when you get, get engaged. Come on. That's how much he loves you. It's extreme. 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 And there may be the guy here when I was here maybe last time or time before. I said, there's someone here like a bomb went off by your ear. And it was a young man. And he was mocking me the whole first service. I don't know if you remember that. And then, uh, and then he, he got healed. He said it sounded like something got sucked out of his ear. Are you, are you here today? I was going to see, have you testify. Not testify, but I might take some video of you. Anyone? He's not here. Kansas City? Well, we'll go to Kansas City next week. We'll find <laughs> Now, I, I wanted uh, Spencer to take pictures of him, praise the Lord, post him all over everything. Well, we're blessed. We're blessed. Grab your Bibles. I'll tell you where to go. I'll tell you Luke 21. Uh, why, would, why would we want to get into end times? Think about it for a minute. Paul talked about the baptism 12 times, coming of the Lord 52 times. For every one verse there is about the first coming of the Lord, eight times more about the second coming. So it's very documented so that we could tell where we are. Why would that be a big deal? He wants you to know where you are. Remember when he came into the madman of Gadara, the demons cried out, Are you come to torment us before the time? Even the demons knew that Jesus had a schedule and he was early. <laughs> so if demons can know the schedule, how much more the church? 
Okay, the Lord rebuked the crowd one time. The Pharisees over and over and over and over again. Why did he rebuke the crowd one time? He said, you can tell what the weather's going to be, but you don't know your hour, your visitation. So he wanted them to know. Why would he want you to know? So you make changes. You get things out of your life that are making you run slower so you can run faster. You said it. We were on the phone last night. We're, 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 we're pressing the gas. We're, 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 we're putting the pedal to the metal. Amen. There's something about accelerating. This whole thing is about how, what else can we add so that we can get more people born again right before we leave the planet. So there's just things coming, a lot of things coming in every area. It's almost like a whole new day here we got uh, to get some things wrought right before the coming of the Lord. He's going to be lifted up. He's going to be magnified. He's going to be glorified in all of the earth. Hallelujah. So let's go look at this. Go to Luke 21. Jesus is going to give us a couple of things here to look at to make it easy to understand end times. So look at Luke 21, verse 24. He said, They'll fall by the edge of the sword, and they'll be led away captive unto all nations. And Jerusalem will be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles will be fulfilled. And it's weird here. The Lord goes, okay, the nations have a certain amount of time. And you can tell when that time is up when you see Jerusalem one back. Pretty radical that you, you have the Lord getting them it back in 1967, Six-Day War. Remember, Israel was completely surrounded, and they won that war. And Jesus said, when you see the Jews get that city, you can tell time is pretty much up. Everything revolves around Jerusalem. Remember the Bible said Jerusalem would be a cup of trembling for all nations? I mean, you think about it. If you live west of Jerusalem, you read left to right. If you live east of Jerusalem, you read right to left. Everything revolves around that piece of real estate. And you watch, everything is going to be about Jerusalem. When you got CBS telling people not to say Jerusalem's in Israel, they see that pressure's on it right now. All the states around Israel right now, they're coming up with all these ideas how to have a two-state solution. Uh, Palestine have their deal and Israel have their deal. Well, that's basically what the Bible calls a covenant with death and hell. Because watch, the, all this pressure is going to come on Israel and the Antichrist is going to come on the scene and go, I have the wonderful solution. And when they sign that contract with the Antichrist, the Bible says that's when the tribulation starts. But that's not to, well, that doesn't happen until we leave. So I don't know how much of a gap there is, but there's a lot going on here. So here Jerusalem was won back in 1967. You remember the stories, the miracles that happened. You could, tell, you could tell 15 or 20 stories. I'll tell you my favorite one I've told you before. Remember the 88 Egyptian tanks were barreling down on Israel? One Israeli cook said, okay, if I'm going to die, I'm going to go out in a place of glory. He goes out and climbs in an Israeli tank and starts firing shells at 88 Egyptian tanks. This is a cook that doesn't even know how to load the gun. It took him a while to figure out how to load the shell in the torrent. Could you imagine, like, right now, Michelle, go. Hop in that tank and fire shells. You go, okay, here we go. I mean, it's you know, not like they're perfect at it. He figures it out, starts firing shells at the Egyptian army. The next morning, the Egyptian commander came out with a white flag. He said, I'm here to surrender to the highest ranking officer. And that, that Israeli cook said, highest ranking officer, it's just me. He said, oh, no, it's not just you. The, the whole countryside was filled with tanks with men dressed in white. You've been shelling us all night. We can't take it anymore. Yeah. So here Israel wins the Six-Day War, gets Jerusalem back. Because everything's going to revolve around that, that capital of the universe forever. I was in the old city just the other day. We went up on the Temple Mount during Ramadan. And the, the crazy rabbi was dancing and singing. And they're, they're not supposed to pray on the Temple Mount. The Jordanian police were following us. The second we got off the Temple Mount, he laid flat on the ground. Because he was one inch beyond the Temple Mount. And, and you don't get in trouble for doing that. The last three or four weeks, you've got rabbis laying prostrate all over the Temple Mount. You've got... Jews praying on the Temple Mount. The Jordanians are going crazy, and so is Saudi Arabia going crazy. But, man, it's just getting ready to happen. Wow, Jerusalem. Jerusalem won back. That's a huge deal. Wow. Isn't it wonderful that God made it to where something that big, a city, get brought back, and you can tell something's up. Something's up. What's up? The capital of the universe, the place where Jesus will dwell forever. Come on, he's going to come back to that spot right there. There'll be a, a, an earthquake, and the Bible says the water will come from the Dead Sea, and it'll go right by Jesus and go out and heal all the, the waters in the earth. From that little location right there, the king's going to be honored. The king's going to be magnified. The king's going to be lifted up so that all the earth can see him. Every knee's going to bow. Every tongue's going to confess. Hallelujah. So here, this is a pretty big deal. Jerusalem's one back. Let's go a little further. There's so much you could get into about that, but look at verse 29. He 
said, look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, you see and know of your own selves that summer or harvest is nigh at hand. So here Jesus said the fig tree is going to bud. And that would happen in 1948. Israel is regathered. And watch what happens here. He says in verse 31, likewise, when you see these things come to pass, what things? He's talking about Israel being made a nation, talking about Jerusalem being won back. When you see these things come to pass, no. Circle the word there in your Bible, no. Know that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Now, he said, okay, when you see these things come to pass, it lets you realize how near it is. But now the Lord's going to go a whole step further here. It's good to know it's close. I mean, woo, Jesus is close to coming back. Look at the next part of the verse. Watch what he says here in verse 32. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away to all fulfilled. He goes from telling you that it's near to giving you a generation that it's going to happen in. And now that freaks people out. I Googled it yesterday, uh, 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 Siri. I said, Siri, when's Jesus coming back? And she said, no man knows the day or the hour because of that one verse. And Jesus was saying, no one knows the day or the hour. Basically, he was telling him a two-day period when he's going to come back. So, so it's amazing how even, even the world thinks they know that Jesus, you can't know when the Lord's coming back, when basically you can. People go, well, how do you know the Lord's coming back? I can read. <laughs> here, he said, here he said, the generation that sees these two things happen, that's when I'm coming back. I've heard people say, I'm not comfortable with that. It don't matter. Tag, you're it, man. This is, we're, we're, we're privileged. Now, those are two. I got about 79 in the book. The, the publisher was doing my book, In Times Made Easy, and they were fact-checking me. They said, you know what? All this stuff really came to pass. I said, do you think I make this stuff up? Are you kidding me? Come on. It's real. And it freaks people out that we can have so much information to show us how close we are to his return. You know, I, I have 10 acres of land. I, I try to mow that. I go preach, I come home and mow. Go preach, come home and mow. And this year, man, I, I saw the trees turn while I was mowing. This, usually it happens while I'm out of town. But I came back and I'm out there. I thought, oh, this is the coolest thing in the world. And, and it didn't freak me out. I, I was excited. All it told me was summer's coming. I didn't go, oh, what mean that this? This is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. No, it preached to me and communicated to me that a change was coming. And Jesus said, when you see Israel regathered and you see Jerusalem on back, there's a change coming. The King of kings and the Lord of lords is coming back. Hallelujah. So that's a big deal, 1967. But let's go back a little bit. Let's, let's go back with time because I, I got some other things I want to get into today. It's taken me a while to get there. We'll get there. How many of you are still glad you came? How many glad you're here and not in surgery? Come on, praise the Lord. Let me in church. Good, 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 good. You know, so the, the, these, these things Jesus is talking about is that you can tell something's up. And boy, you can look around the world right now and you can tell something's up. Jesus is just about to come. So we're privileged. We're blessed. We'll, we'll run through the signs here in a second. Uh, but but uh, the, the thing about the signs are they're not to scare you. I've heard people go, I just don't want to see that stuff anymore. No, signs are there to show you how close you are to your destination. On the way here from the hotel, I saw the sign to lead me to the right expressway. I didn't freak out. It helped me know I'm getting closer to Alma. So the Lord put these things in there to bring you peace and to bring you joy. Everything about what we're getting into about the coming of the Lord is to make you happy and hopeful. Zero fear. You know what? This morning, he loves you. He's not mad at you. He's not frustrated with you. He loves you. He wants to bless you. He wants to encourage you. He wants you excited. How many of you were excited the night before you got married? Four people. Wow. <laughs> so the day before you got married, was it like, okay, tomorrow's the day. Oh, my God. Here we go. No. I mean, just like with Colleen, I can imagine I'm standing there and Colleen's walking down the aisle. She's got that white dress on and it's all dirty and muddy like she's been playing in the mud. And I'm standing there getting ready for her to come down and she's all bent over going, oh my God, I'm going to marry that guy. Another one bites the dust. Now that would make me, I wouldn't be like, oh wow, this is exciting. I'd be like, no, that's not the verbiage you want, but that's kind of the church. I mean, the church has kind of like gotten beat up over the years, gotten tired of talking about the coming of the Lord. No, there should be such preaching and such a voice on the coming of the Lord that it makes us make adjustments. Yeah. Amen. So let's look at some of these. We'll run through them because I, I, I want to get somewhere, but it seems like it's taking me a while. So you got Israel regathered in our lifetime. 
If you go back 50 years from 1967, boy, it's pretty radical. Some things happened in 1917. This is a cool deal because it shows you how flawless God is. 1917, you, you had Allenby, an Australian general. He flies into the land, and they pass leaflets out everywhere. Allenby's coming, Allenby's coming, Allenby's coming. They didn't know that in Arabic, his name meant a prophet sent from God to deliver you your land. So they thought, well, you know what? We can't beat God. So they just dropped their weapons, and the land was turned over to Israel, 1917. Same year, something happened in the church. Kenneth Hagin was born. Jesus appears to his mother and tells her to name him John. She goes, I don't like, I don't like that name. I like Kenneth. Don't you love that? How weird. God tells you to what you name your kid. Yeah, I don't like that. So, so uh, think about it. But you know what Hagen means in the Hebrew? One to go before to prepare people for the coming of the Lord. So that happened in 1917. Now watch this. 50 years later, one jubilee, Jerusalem's won back. See, he's on, he's on a flawless clock. Go back to Isaiah. Look at this. This is why we get into this. Go back to Isaiah. I wasn't going to go there because I've got other places I want to roll. But just run there for a minute. This will bless you. Go to Isaiah chapter 46. You pick out the chapter. See if you're flowing. Look at Isaiah 46. This is one of the coolest verses in the Bible, probably one of the best witnessing verses in the whole entire Bible. Isaiah chapter 46, look at verse 9. You with me there in verse 9? It's page 819 if you've got a Bible like mine. Isaiah 46, look at verse 9. Remember the former things of old. I'm God, there's none else. I'm God, there's none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient times things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. He basically said, this is how you can tell I'm God. I'm going to tell you the future before you get there. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. You can look at other uh, different religions. You can talk to a Buddhist. You can talk to a Muslim. Their book doesn't give you future. This is the only book that gives you future. Right. We're blessed. He's already been there, done that, made the t-shirt. Listen, listen to the first ten names of guys in the Bible. It'll show you how flawless God is. Okay, I know it's a lot of information, but run with me mentally for a second. Adam means man. Seth means appointed. Enos means mortal. Canaan means sorrow. Mahaliel means the blessed God. Jared means shall come down. Enoch means teaching. Methuselah means his death brings. Lamech means despairing, and Noah means rest. Put them all together. Man is appointed mortal with sorrow. The blessed God shall come down teaching that his death brings the despairing rest. Wow. Gives you the entire plan of redemption with the first ten names of guys in the Bible. So see, these things are flawless. You got Jesus telling Kenneth Hagin's mom, name him John. You have a lady in Mark Brzee's church. Uh, she's an evangelist. She died a few years ago. They defibrillated her. She's in heaven talking to Jesus. She saw Brother Hagin. She said, oh, look, Kenneth Hagin. Jesus said, you mean John? <laughs> so if your name's supposed to be John, it's supposed to be John. Praise the Lord. So we look at these things and we're like, Lord, you're, you're absolutely amazing how flawless you are. So you happen to be living when the two biggest signs have happened in your lifetime. Israel regathered. Hitler killed six million Jews just before they were regathered. And here they came together. And in 1967, Jerusalem's won back. So we have these things that tell us and preach to us that the king's about to come back. Wow. So let's run through them real quick because I want to go on to the next thing for a little bit. How can we tell? How, how can we tell? Even though Jesus said it pretty clear there, those are two signs. The book uh, we got back there says there's 79. Okay, let's run through them. What, number one, you got the, the, the Hebrew language restored. Pretty radical because the God said just before the Messiah comes, I'll restore to them a pure language. You know what? Google that. It's never happened in history. You can't, you can't find anybody speaking Hittite, Canaanite, Amorite. But you can hear him speaking Hebrew because God said he'll revive that language just before the coming of the Lord. hundred years ago, no one spoke Hebrew. Now, everybody speaks Hebrew because God said he would do that. you got Russia rebuilt the archway for Baal worship in Palmyra. This is where the Tower of Babel was. And uh, they re rebuilt that archway for Baal worship because the Talmud says that's the last sign you'll see before the Messiah comes. You've got revival of the Roman Empire. You've got the EU, United States of Europe. You have their capital building in Strasbourg, France. It looks just like the Tower of Babel. They tore it up at the top and didn't finish it, so it looked just like it. Their slogan is, we, we won't need God. We'll be our own gods. The, the, the stuff that's all over the walls, like you have, guys have all the stuff about Jesus, what they have all over their walls is uh, stuff from Nebuchadnezzar. 
The art out in front of the building is, is a molecule of iron because Daniel saw iron and clay. So you have that. You've got this one I love, the History Channel, Bishop Malachi. Remember Bishop Malachi from the year 1129 A.D.? This is so cool. He had a vision of every pope that would be on the earth all the way up to the coming of the Lord. He got the coat of arms correct, 114 out of 114. Wow. You know what the History Channel said? That's statistically impossible. Only a God can do that. Guess what pope we have right now? The 114. So we, we have all this stuff preaching to us that Jesus is coming. You, you've got the Ethiopian Jews brought back. Remember Israel sent C-130s down into Ethiopia? Airlifted 18,000 back in one day. CNN headline news said an exodus that eclipses the book of Exodus. Listen, when CNN goes to preaching about what the Lord's doing, you better lift up your head. Come on. So, they, I mean, on their manifest, they had 180 people on their manifest. When they landed, they had 187. They had seven babies born on that one flight. They had three babies born on that other flight. So God brought them out because he said he would do that just before the coming of the Messiah. Wow. Now you got foxes on the Temple Mount. you got fish in the Dead Sea. You have the Dead Sea turning blood red where Sodom and Gomorrah was on the Day of Atonement. I told the Lord, I said, Lord, you're just, you're just showing off now. That's crazy. I mean, so you got all these different groups in position. you got predatory birds. 172 different species of predatory birds started showing up in the land. I mean, that's kind of radical. What you have is <laughs> you have the Ezekiel 38 war. That's right after the rapture. God calls on the fowl of the air to come clean the land up. Seven years later at the Battle of Armageddon, he calls on the fowl of the air to clean the land up again. So you got the cleanup crew in Israel right now. You got the, the ritual baths around the Temple Mount fill up with water. First time in 2,000 years. Last week, they did the celebration of the libation with water. That's illegal for them to do. They did it on the Temple Mount. This one's crazy. Remember the red heifers, the cows? Okay, so they, they got five red heifers that came from Texas. Guess how they got them from Texas to Israel? They wrote them down as service animals. Can you imagine walking down the airport with a cow instead of a dog? <laughs> Good to see you. Wow, you're, you have a cow. That's weird. Well, because of COVID, they didn't clip their ears. They've already started to clip their ears again. So there's a group of red heifers that between two and three years old that don't have their ears clipped, so they're spotless. Guess how old they have to be when they're used, between two and three. That's how old they are right now. You have a group there in, in Jerusalem, mm, rebuilt the Ark of the Covenant. They have it in Shiloh. You know what they did last week? The day of our elections, they went over there to Shiloh and they prayed. Israeli people went over there and prayed for America right there from Shiloh. So you got the cows that are ready, the worms they need to do the secretion on their foreheads. They found all those, hadn't been able to find them. What do they do? It secretes a red, red uh, uh, ink. And when, you, when, when that red ink is put on them, within three days it turns white. Though your sins be scarlet, they be white as snow. So you got birds in position, fish in position, foxes in position, cows in position, <laughs> flown over from, from Texas to bless Israel. So all these different things are there because Jesus is just about to come back. Many, many, many more signs. You've got men who be lovers themselves. You have selfie sticks. Never did you think you'd live in a time when people are going, oh, I think I'll take a few more photographs of myself. How weird is that? I mean, it's just completely bizarre. So there's tons of signs, and you got signals. You had the blood red moons. You had all that. You had Bethlehem star. That's all happening right now. So, so God's giving it to us overwhelmingly clear that we're about to leave the planet. So there's some stuff for the last day church to do, and that is to be a voice, be a witness. Just like Elijah came on the scene and brought Israel back, the believers to get people to come back. It doesn't have to be weird. It doesn't have to be strange. You can be getting a quarter pounder with cheese, large Diet Coke, and some fries, and go, oh, by the way, the king's coming back. And what do you mean the king's coming back? Everybody feels it right now, and you've got the answers. You can tell them this is exactly what happened. Hebrew language restored. Ethiopian Jews brought back, fertility of the land of Israel, revival of the Roman Empire. You have all those things to go, this is the generation he's coming. But let's look at what's next for us. Go over with your Bibles. Uh, look over at 1 Thessalonians, and let's look at the next event for us. And this is what I was planning on preaching on, but I had to get some things through before we got there. Grab your Bibles there and go to 1 Thessalonians. And let's look at what the next event is for our lives, because this is coming the biggest change for our lives is going to be the most exciting thing ever. It's the rapture of the church. 
Now, those signs that we talked about a while ago, those are all signs of the second coming. So the rapture is seven years earlier. So if you're seeing all the signs of the second coming, you back up seven years. Just think how close we are to the rapture of the church. Now, I want us to get this. The rapture is not an ending. It's a beginning. Amen. You're writing your resume for what you'll be doing during the millennium. So, so I, I heard people say, oh, I don't want the Lord to come back because i got so much in my heart. Well, it's because you're going to live forever. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, oh, the glory of God. Just we we got so much stuff to look forward to. So go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And now Paul wrote this letter to the, to the church of Thessalonica. What was the theme of the letter? End times. He talked about the Antichrist, talked about the rapture. Pretty crazy that he was with them for two weeks, and that's what he talked about. They thought they were in the tribulation. Remember Nero was taking Christians and dunking them in oil and setting them up on poles for night lights. So they thought, well, we have to be in the tribulation. So Paul writes this letter to them going, no, you, you're, you, you can't be in the tribulation because you're still there. So in other words, the, the Antichrist can't even come on the scene until the church departs. That's how much authority you have. So he goes on here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. You know the verses real well. Look at verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, so shall we ever be with the Lord. I like verse 18. Wherefore, or because of this, comfort one another with these words. So Paul's writing about the rapture of the church to bring us comfort. So it'll take fear out. And, and you, you think about it right now, you tell people there's a, there's a rapture coming, and that freaks them out. That word rapture just blows people's minds. It's really just a departure how many of you have been evacuated? Like if it was getting ready to flood, they, they evacuated the seniors out because the water was going to get too high. They didn't go, this is a weird deal. It's called an evacuation. They're going to take us from this place to this place. But when it comes to the word rapture, people get weird. It's the Greek word harpazo, means taken. Remember Elijah and Elisha? Elisha, the sons of the prophets, came up and told Elisha, don't you know your master's going to be taken from you today? He goes, yeah, I know it. Shut up. It's that word taken, it's harpazo. You say, well, the word rapture is not in the Bible. Absolutely it is. The Latin Bible is the word raptur, rapture. So I don't care if people get nervous about it. I don't care if they say it came from the late 1800s. Enoch was raptured way before the 1800s. Elijah was raptured before the 1800s. And then Jesus was raptured, and we're going to be raptured. Man, you talk about awesome. We've, we've borne the image of the earthy. We're going to bear the image of the heavenly instantaneously. The shortest amount of time that can't be divided. All of a sudden, we shall be changed. The stain of Adam is going to be taken off of us. Come on, never to get tired again. Oh, good night, everybody. Come on. Never to gain weight. Come on. Glory to God. How cool is that? Just, just think of never gaining weight. Praise the Lord. We could close right there. Good night, everybody. Drive safely. See you tomorrow. Come on. No, so a change is coming for us that's absolutely, uh, we can't even comprehend it in our mind how cool it's going to be. We always go back to Scripture, though. You know, Scripture shows us what it'll be like. Remember, Jesus on the road to Emmaus, he's been raised from the dead. He's in a glorified body. He's walking with them, and they didn't know who he was. How cool is that, that he could keep who he was from them? And the Bible says they would have kept right on walking. This is a key to revival. They would, he would have kept right on walking. They constrained him to stay for dinner. And what did he do? He sat down, took them through the Word. It was better to get it through the Word than get it through sight. You know, one thing that's going to happen to you when you're in heaven, people are going to walk up to you and go during the millennium and go, wait, wait, wait. So you asked Jesus into your heart when you couldn't see him through the foolishness of preaching? God's raised up a group of people the last 70 years that aren't moved by what they feel, aren't moved by what they see. They're moved by what the word says about them. So Jesus took them through the word and showed them to him. Well, then he broke a little bread, then disappeared. And they go, man, that was him. Did not our hearts burn within us the words that he spoke to us? Woo! Man, what a cool Easter lesson. Right from Jesus himself. Well, you know the deal. They went back and told the disciples, hey, we saw him. We had dinner with him. We met with him. And it was so cool. He took us through the word, showed us Christ in the Old Testament. 
And they said, no, you, no, you didn't. <laughs> Thomas goes, I don't believe that. I won't believe that until I see the holes in his hand, see the hole in his side. Right then, Jesus walks right through the wall. Thomas, <laughs> reach into your hands, thrust it into my side. Be not faithless, but believing. Don't you love that? And he freaked out. He said, my Lord and my God. And then he goes, well, he's a spirit because he walked through the wall. He goes, no, no, handle me. A spirit hath not flesh and bone as you see I have. So he's showing them he's in a glorified body. He can walk through walls, but he can still be felt. And then the first thing he asked for, he said, do you have any meat? He didn't say, do you have any salad? He didn't say, do you have any kale? Come on. He didn't, shrubbery. Jesus didn't go, you got any shrubbery for me? No. He said, do you have any meat? Showing you how normal your body's going to be, that you can still be felt. You can walk through walls, though, which that's kind of weird. And he said, but then you can still have normal food. He's showing you, man, you're going to have the coolest body ever. Think about it. Glory to God, moving at the speed of thought. So we shall be changed. Wow, glory to God. I'm ready for that. I think I have a song coming on me right now. We shall be changed. Here we go. Woo, glory to God. So what a, what a cool event that's getting ready to happen. You're writing your resume for what you'll be doing during the millennium. And God set your life up for that next dispensation. Man, oh man. All right, let's see how we qualify. Buzz over there to verse 14. You, you with me there in a chapter 4 of Thessalonians? Look at verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Okay, so there's the qualifications to go up in the rapture to be in Christ. We've tried to make it about us. Am I holy enough? Am I cool enough? It's not about you. Jesus made you holy because of his blood. I was just in Galveston. I had that lady in Galveston walk up to me years ago. She said, how dare you say all the believers are going up in the rapture? I said, well, the Bible's pretty clear about that. And the Holy Spirit loves to magnify Jesus. He said, ask her, whose works would she rather trust in, her works or Jesus' works? So there's something about being in the body. You, you know, my, my friends call me the hangnail on the body of Christ. But if I'm the hangnail, at least I'm still in the body. Amen? Come on. So this change is coming. Change is coming. Change is coming. Rapture. Wow. And then you, you go, how do we know when it's going to be? Look at chapter 5. The Bible's so clear. Watch. He's going to show you how you, you'll know how near it is because we've been taught we couldn't know. Well, we just need to read what the Word says. The Word answers everything. Look at chapter 5, verse 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. When they, the world, shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them, the world, as travail upon a woman with child. They, the world, shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. You are the children of light. You are the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. And that's pretty radical. Paul's pretty bold right there. Don't get mad at me. Get mad at Paul. He said that day won't surprise you. Now, now hang with me because, see, that you, feel, you feel the breaks right there because that's just, that's, we have been taught that. What? Okay. John 14. The only little reference to the rapture in the Gospels. Remember Jesus said, uh, in my Father's house are many mansions. We're not so would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you that where I am there you may be also. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. That was a hidden view of the rapture. All of the Gospels only speak of the second coming, but this is one little hidden view of it because what it was was a Jewish wedding proposal. What Jesus said right then was uh, what a Jewish man would say to a woman, will you marry me? That's how he would say it. Now, what would happen in that, in that culture, a man would ask a woman to marry him. The man would go back to the father's house. The father would oversee the building of a honeymoon uh, suite, and the father would tell the son when the room is done. I asked lady after lady after lady in Israel, I go, now, how close would you know to when he's coming she goes well word would come to us that the room is done you can kind of tell if the room's done or not done your room here looks done doesn't look not done the walls are I mean, your sheet rock's good the paint's good so you can kind of tell not rocket science so i told the ladies i said how would you guys know they said we'd know within a day or two because she said we don't want to put 500 dollars worth of perfume on in six more months I said, wait a minute, you'd know within a day or two. That's why when Jesus said of that day and that hour, no man knows, he was talking about the rapture of the church. 
You know why? Because the rapture is probably going to happen on Feast of Trumpets. The Feast of Trumpets was on the 29.5th day of the month. So you didn't know if it was on the 29th or the 30th. The Sanhedrin would send two witnesses out to see which day it was. So just like those women told me, I'd know within a day or two, Jesus told them by code, by saying of that day and that hour no man knows, they probably bumped each other and said, he just told us the day he's coming back. The very thing that Jesus taught us that we could tell when he's coming has made the whole church say you don't know when he's coming. So who's in charge of that? Lucifer. You say, well, what do you mean? Well, what happens when, when, when the Father says the room is done? Jesus with the shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, he's going to come right out of heaven. We're going to go up to meet him. And it's just like a Jewish wedding proposal. That he, the, the, the man yells and his bride comes out to meet him. What a wonderful picture of the rapture of the church. Glory to God. You talk about change for us. We're going to go right there. We'll go to a meet and greet with all of our family that's already in heaven. Yeah. Won't that be cool? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, we're, we're right there on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. Wow, we'll see the throne of God. We'll see the rainbow around the throne. We'll see the basin right in front of the throne, filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Wow. And we'll, I believe we'll look at each other and go, dear Lord, here we are. The Bible says it'll be a sea of glass, clear as crystal. Crystal's the only element that won't hide a flaw. We'll be flawless before the throne of God. Man, how cool is that going to be? I mean, exciting. That, that's so soon for us. So we, surely we can go for it if we sense that soon. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like a runner in a relay race, they might be exhausted. They might be tired. They might have trained. But when you see that finish line, you go, you know what? I've, I've ran this far. I can, go, I can give it my all now. Yeah. So we know that's coming. There's a lot of stuff you could preach on the rapture, but I want to skip over to the main part I want to get to. Isn't it funny how I've given you appetizer after appetizer? Here's the main course for five minutes. You got five minutes? Yes. It's 1137. I'll give you five minutes. How's that? Maybe seven minutes. No, that'd be bad enough. Praise the Lord. You've got to be careful. Five, five, 25, 35, like an auctioneer. Here we go. <laughs> Four in the afternoon, he's still going. Yeah. Pastor John's sound asleep on the front row. He's like, <laughs> Lord, help me get through this. So the next event for us, because you want to really magnify what the world's going to go through. We know what it is. It's called the tribulation. It's horrible, horrific, absolutely horrific. It's pressure put on people to accept Jesus as the Messiah. Okay? So we don't have to be here during that time because that's called a time of Jacob's trouble, not the church's trouble. Jacob, Israel, Israel's trouble. But this is something we should focus on, and that is what's going to happen to us just after we're raptured is we're going to go to the reward seat of Christ. It's been preached as being the the judgment seat of Christ. That's a mistranslation. The the Greek word there is bima, means means reward seat, podium. Remember the Olympics in Paris? They'd get up on that podium, and they would stand there, and the, the nation's national anthem would play, and they'd get a gold, silver, or bronze. I've never seen an Olympic go, oh! to go get my medals. No, they're excited. They, they've, they've trained. They've, they've pushed to get those medals. They go up on that, on that podium and they get the medals. What's going to happen to you and I? This is really cool. I want you to get this. That he's, God's not going to judge your sin right there. Sin was laid on Jesus. He's, the fire is going to hit your life to expose the motives of your hearts why you did the works you did. Were the works valuable or not valuable? You know what it's going to do? God's, oh, this is it right here. Hang with me. God's going to eradicate even the pride that could have been in the church right there. That you did things under pride is going to burn it up right there. So things you did to be seen of men or to be cool because of pride, it's going to be burned up right there. That's wood, hay, and stubble. Anything that you did that's, that's uh, of eternity value, gold, silver, and precious stones, you will... Adorn yourself with your gold, silver, and precious stones. You'll see people's faithfulness on the robe they wear. You'll have a robe that has a stitch right here. You came on Sunday nights. You'll have a robe that has a stitch right here. You came on Wednesday nights. You'll have a robe that has a stitch right there that you're a soul winner. You'll have a robe that has a stitch over here that you, you gave your life for the Lord. Just like in the military, they wear fruit over their chest. I've never seen a general walk on a plane with stars and go, check it out, I was faithful. <laughs> no, no, the general doesn't have to say anything. His uniform preaches for him. Come on, you don't want to be running around the millennium in a Speedo bathing suit. <laughs> you don't want the fire. To, can you imagine getting up on that podium? You got so much wood, hay, and stubble, all of a sudden, God, woo, people go, what, well, who was that? Dear God. I mean, you don't want people backing up or getting singed. I mean, we'll know it's we'll know Zach. We'll go, what was that? That was Zach, man. Kaboom, all that wood, hay, and stubble. 
Could you imagine people talking about that later? Did you see that fire? Wow. <laughs> Yikes. No, you want gold, silver, and precious stones. What's gold? Your devotional life. What's silver? The Bible says the tongue of the just is cho- choice silver. Your words either encourage or discourage. Make sure your words encourage. The precious stones were on the priest. He would go in for the presence of God. Not for himself. He did it for the people. Wow. So you'll, you, during that millennium, you'll look at John Wesley and you'll go, you'll look at his robe and you'll go, wow, check that out. He said, give me ten men that hate sin and love God and I will change the world. He said, let God set you on fire. People will come watch you burn. Woo. What's cool is we still got some time to get some things brought. Amen, with the right attitude. Now, we're not doing it because we, we just want to have cool robes. We're doing it because we want to love people. Amen. But you think about how some of these guys, you're, you're going to look at John Wesley's robe. You'll go, man, I wish I had a robe. Like, no, you'll go, wow, check it out. Man, he did the will of God. We, I was in the Ukraine one time. We drove out there. Remember in Russia how the students that you drive out with, they're reading books by, by Brother Hagen before you even go to class. And I looked out through there, and there was a concrete bunker out in the middle of nowhere. I thought it was like a bomb shelter. I said, what's that? It said a Methodist church. All because John Wesley said, give me ten men that hate sin and love God, and I'll, I'll change the world. Wow. So we, we, at the end of this church age, we have all these signs of his coming. We're about to be changed. The biggest change for our life uh, since getting born again is going to happen. We'll get a brand new body. And we'll go to the reward seat of Christ we go to horse flying school for a couple hours, I guess. <laughs> Here we go, Trigger. I just hope my, my horse has a good GPS. I don't want to show up on Mars. Where is everybody? <laughs> Wrong planet. <laughs> Could, wouldn't that be terrible? See, if I was the Lord, I'd play tricks on people. It'd be like, Zach would be coming down. I'm on Saturn. This is not cool. Come on. So we'll go to horse flying school for a couple hours. Then all of a sudden, we're going to load up and we're going to come back with Jesus. And the Bible says the glory that's in his face will light the whole heavens. There's no need for the sun because the brightness in his face will outshine it. Wow. And you'll watch the inhabitants of the earth. They'll be hitting the deck. Glory and honor and power and dominion to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He reigns omnipotent. Hallelujah. Dominion, power, righteousness. Jesus. Jesus did it all. Wow. Hallelujah. Amen. So with all of this, we happen to be living in such a day of adjustments, a day of change. Let's do this. Let's just pray. It's 1143. I, I purposely tried to make sure we had a little bit of time left. Let's, uh, let's just do this. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. We can, you can, this is not a bad thing. This is a good thing. It's called consecration. <laughs> what we do is when we hear a message about the, the reward seat of Christ, it arrests us to do the will of God. So what we want to do, let's bow our heads and close our eyes. And uh, if there's anything in your life that's keeping you from running faster or, or weights or sins, even just weird attitudes, whatever, let's just get them all out right now Sunday morning that we can go into the Christmas season and Thanksgiving with, with a, a heart that's consecrated and dedicated to do the will of God. Lord, we come before you. We thank you for these radical plans for this church, Lord. For beyond church, you've got things set in motion by your spirit to be the most effective season ever for this church. Most effective, effective season ever as this church. So, Lord, we take this moment to, to bow our heads and close our eyes and uh, help us strip everything out that would be uh, encumbering to us to run our race. We get rid of mentalities and thought patterns. In Jesus, we look unto you, the author and the finisher of our faith. We thank you for it. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We see you. Wow. We see you. You've given unto us a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. There there is an insight into your plans for this church, Lord. We thank you for it. We thank you for it. We thank you for it, Lord. We give you glory. We give you honor and give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. He loves you this morning. Now, what happens when we do that consecration part is... The very last thing that he told you to do, he'll remind you. He'll go, okay, I I dealt with you about this. Now, now he'll, and then he'll give you new revelation, or give you new assignments. Man, this is a season where assignments are just being blasted into the church. And you might think, well, I, I don't feel feel qualified to do that. Man, get behind everybody. No one feels qualified. Hallelujah.
Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right, real quick before we go, I've preached a little bit too long. Is there anybody, you're here, and you've never given your life to the Lord? Maybe you came, I know you came to your pastor Nate, maybe you came to hear him, but he'll be next week, but maybe you're here this morning, and you, you wouldn't know if you went to heaven today. If Jesus came back today, you wouldn't know if you'd go. Let's make sure we know for sure. If you're here this morning, and you've never asked him into your heart, I want to pray with you. I won't embarrass you, I'll pray with you. With the uplifted hand, say, that's me. That's that's me. That's me. Pray for me. I want to give my life to the Lord. How cool to have a birthday just before Jesus comes. Anyone at all, you'd like to give your life to the Lord. Praise God. Don't want to miss anybody. Amen. Praise the Lord. Looks like everybody's saved. Let's do this grenade prayer. If there is someone, I'm sorry, I didn't see it. There we go. Good, good, good. There's one. Who else? Who else wants to join that one to get saved? Sorry, I missed you. Who else? There you go. God bless you. Who else wants to join that one? There you go. Good, good, good. Praise the Lord. Another one over there. Good, good, good. Good for you. Who else wants to join those? There's about five or six. Amen. I see that. Thank you, sis. Good for you, sis. Who else? Anybody else? Man, how cool to have a birthday just before the rapture of the church. Anyone else? Don't want to miss anybody. Amen. Good for you, bud. That's awesome. Good for you, man. That's so cool. Young man over there. Awesome, bud. Who else wants to join those? Anybody else? Don't want to miss anybody. You want to give your life to the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I believe you'll have a label on your door as you come in. You can whack that label with your hand as you walk by. Ooh, glory to God. I got saved just before Jesus came. Anyone else at all? Don't want to miss anybody. If you hadn't, if you hadn't lifted up your hand and want to right now. Anyone else at all? Amen. Praise the Lord. I know he loves you so much. Loves you so much. Well, let's pray this prayer. And even if you didn't raise your hands, but you felt like you should, pray this prayer from your heart, and we're going to ask the Lord into our hearts. Let's all pray this together. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I accept you this morning as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for dying for me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Wow, happy birthday. Praise God. The Bible says the angels rejoice. Woo, hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Wow, glory to God. Amen, amen, amen. One more invitation. You say, well, I'm saved. I know I'm going to heaven. I've, got, I've done that, but I've not been baptized with the Holy Spirit. Jesus said you'd be endued with power from on high. If you're like that here this morning, you've never done that, let's do that this morning. Glory to God. Jesus said, man, don't even leave the city limits till you get it. If you're here this morning, you've never done it, and you want to do it today, lift the uplifted hand. Say, that's me. Pray for me. I want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Anyone at all. won't take but a minute. In fact, they'll call you down later, and you'll, they'll pray for you after the service is over. Who, there's one back there. Good for you, buddy. Awesome, awesome. Who else? I know there's, there's many need to get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let's get it. Let's get it. Who else? Who else wants to join that man? Anybody else? Praise the Lord. Amen. He loves you. wants you to have it all. Remember, he's not mad at you. Who else wants to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? I saw one hand. Who else wants to? Who's the other one wants to do it? Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, I don't care where you do it. You can go out in your car and ask the Lord to fill you. He'll fill you. You don't have to do it in the church service. You can do it wherever you want. He just loves you, and he wants you to have power. Amen. A buddy of mine, when I was going to Ramah, right after I went to Ramah 44 years ago, uh, I was working for this other minister. I drove a courier in the morning, taught swimming lessons to tiny tots at night sold houses in the afternoon and then ran tapes for the preacher so I started working with this other guy he had a Porsche 928 we would go up here to uh, uh, Miami, Oklahoma and we'd pull into the uh, airport and get 115 octane for that Porsche we'd get airplane fuel and we'd put that airplane fuel in that Porsche and we'd be going down the freeway 150 miles an hour and he'd, he'd open his uh, sunroof it'd suck my straw right out of my Diet Coke because we're going so fast and I said I like that power <laughs> that 115 octane that's righteous come on so that's what happens when you get baptized in the Holy Ghost. You get high octane, high octane. Who wants to join that man back there to get filled with the Spirit before we dismiss? Don't want to miss anybody. You want some high octane. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. There's one. Good for you. Awesome. Good, good. Who else? That's two that want to get filled. Who else? I know there's more. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Greg Squires Church in Orlando on a Wednesday night. I think there were 32 people filled with the Holy Ghost. That church in Boise, each service over 30 people baptized in the Holy Spirit. 
uh, Lubbock, Texas, 58 people filled. I didn't even have anywhere to put them. There's so many people. See, there's a whole new crop of people. I'm saying it's, it's good. We've got a whole new crop of people coming in that haven't gotten filled. So if you haven't gotten filled, don't be embarrassed. Get it today. Yeah. Who else wants to join those two? Then we'll dismiss. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. All right, so Pastor Nate will show you what to do here in a moment. When we dismiss, he'll have you come down. They'll pray with you. Be instantly filled with the Spirit. But I had a word of knowledge real quick, and we'll, we'll close. Uh, whiplash. Someone's got, getting healed of whiplash. you got some kind of damage in your neck. It wouldn't have to be a car wreck. It could be something different, if it's okay, if it is a car wreck. But This other one is you, you have anemia in your blood, like you have a, 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 a thinness or a weakness in your blood. Right now at 1151, your blood's being healed right now. Thank you for that, Lord. This other one is a, is a lady where you hold a child. Uh, uh, wow. The wall of your uterus is being healed right now. That's just what the Lord just said to me. Amen. So you're being healed. Praise God. Amen. Bless the Lord. The other one is your, your eyes, your plumbing in your eyes. You got damage in the, 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 these things right here where the water comes through. Don't know what the damage is, but you're healed. Amen. I was in South Carolina. I had a couple words of knowledge. I said, there's someone here. You're in a car wreck. Your neck and your back got hurt. And someone inside their nose got severed. Just called it out. This six foot ten guy comes walking down. He goes, hey, can I say something? I was like, oh, here we go. He goes, I don't know you, but you know what? I was in a car wreck. He said, my neck is healed. My back's healed. And my wife was in brain surgery. They went up through the base of her nose to get to the base of her brain. They severed the inside of her nose. She wasn't in the service. And he, I called that out. She texted him and said, when he called that out, my nose got healed. Wasn't even in the building. Amen. Literally, the, the Lord's just so good. He just loves you, loves you, loves you, loves you. Someone, your, your carotid artery, you got trouble with your carotid artery, you're being healed. Right here. Amen. Thank you for that, Lord. Someone, your balance, you got trouble with your balance. 1152, your balance is being restored. Amen. Thank you, Father. Let's just thank Him for a second. We'll go. Lord, we love you. We magnify you. Just tell Him how much you love Him. Lord, we love you. We magnify you. We glorify you. Thank you for your kindness and your goodness. Thank you for that, Father. We, we bless you and magnify you. Someone's bone marrow is being healed. Lord, strengthen their bone marrow. Thank you for that. Someone, the damage on the bottom of your foot, the flat part of your foot, the bottom part is being restored right now. Lord, thank you for restoration of the flat part of their foot. Thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for it. We give you glory and give you honor and give you praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you glory and honor and praise. You know, I told this the church I was in the other day. I was up in Grand Junction, Colorado. Judy uh, Brandberg, a pastor of a church I used to go to in Denver, wrote down like nine or ten things that were wrong with her. She came to the meeting that night. I was walking back and forth calling out words of knowledge. didn't even think of anything about it. And actually was going longer than I normally go. After the service, she walked up to me. She said, you called out all nine of those things that I wrote down. See, that's just how much she loves you. He just loves you, loves you. Love. Get that in you before we walk out the door this morning. He loves you. He loves you. He wants to bless you. He wants to strengthen you. Thank you, Jesus. Man, there's so much about what I didn't get in to say about the plan of God for your church and even for what that was for John and Michelle. I believe that will come back to me this afternoon a little bit more. And, and it even is for, for Spencer and Sarah. That's crazy. And, and for Chris and Amelia, there's a... You could call it a preparation for the very last moment. This whole church, you feel it for the whole church. There's just, you'll, 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 now listen real carefully. You'll have it come to you this afternoon. You'll hear the words come to you. Okay, that's my part, that's my part. That's my job, that's my job. It's almost like when they were going to hit Normandy. Remember when, the, when it was D Day? They got all the groups together. You got the Air Force, you got the infantry. And what happened in one day? One day, there was an, a, a, a thought pattern that stopped, basically stopped World War II. So, so if they got all ready for that one, one beachhead, Normandy. So everybody's in position. What I'm saying is God's going to give you some instruction about things that he'll have you do in the church. And with those instructions will come grace. And with that grace will come anointing. And with that anointing will come a boldness for you to do what God's called you to do. But it's going to be so supernatural. I'll thread out all throughout the whole church. I don't, you may be grilling hamburgers this afternoon and go, I see exactly what I'm supposed to do in the church. Because he wants all hands on deck. 
Could you imagine going into Normandy and they got all the boats all lined up and there's four guys. Four, Here we go, boys. Well, we need about 50,000 boys. So, so that's, that's the call. You got, you got a Normandy call for the church. And he's, he's wanting you to enlist. Amen. You already did enlist, so you're in. Amen. Hey, thank you for coming this morning. So appreciate you guys. You guys are so easy to preach to. Give Pastor Nate a big hand as he comes. I know we'll have some more tonight of what the Lord wants to do. Have a great afternoon. We'll see you tonight. Say no to drugs. You can do it. <laughs> All right. Praise the Lord. We're just going to dismiss uh, 630 tonight. He's going to be back uh, ministering. Um, so make plans to be here. Uh, other than that, we'll see you guys this afternoon or this evening. Have a great afternoon. Uh, one thing too, you know, one of the things at the very, very beginning uh, that we talk about a lot is um, is that phone number five five one five one 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 eight six seven five three zero nine, and um, and we talk about how you know if you're new here or if you need prayer. Um, but when we close service, we have uh, just a, a prayer team, uh, some leadership uh, every service that we'd love to pray with you. You know, don't, you don't have to wait. You don't have to text. When you come together, uh, you can come up front, but you can also even grab the person next to you. But I just wanted to let you know uh, we'll have time of uh, prayer. And then also, if you raise your hand to receive uh, the gift of the Spirit, it's probably one of the most precious things to me in my, in my life, um, the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Um, and I think sometimes... Uh, it's made to be weird, and really, it's just such a, a blessing and a help. It's a, it's a strength. It's, um, it's help for when you don't know. It's, it's also a, to build you up on your in, in, inside. There's so many things. So so cool. So uh, if you raised your hand, and then even like you said, if you didn't raise your hand uh, after, you can come on up, and we'll uh, pray with you. Receive the Holy Ghost. So for me, I felt like I was supposed to share this little testimony. So I'm going to do it. Um, man, it was something I wanted so bad. And I was at uh, I was at youth camp, and 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 the thing is, is um, when you want something, and I love this that that God even He says He'll give you both the the will and the desire, like the the will and to do according to His good pleasure. There's a hunger that He even will plant there. So there's a hunger. Don't squash His hunger. That's a gift. If He's if He's drawing you, or that's a gift. But I was this young man in 1995, because um, it was just such a marked moment for me. Uh, in 1995, I was at, at a youth camp, and I was pretty cool, I thought, um, back then. You know, that's teenage years, and uh, play basketball, you know, the whole, like, everything going to camp. You know, when you go to camp, you get your kicks. When you go to camp, I just got a brand new Nike windsuit. That was cool back then. Um, you know, like, all the, the cool stuff. But, man, God got a hold of me, and I just wanted. And I remember going up. And I couldn't get it. And that might be some of y'all's things. Like, I've tried it, and it just doesn't work for me. That's for other people. And uh, But I was like, I, I want it. And somebody stood with me um, for 20 minutes. And then it just came. And that night, that was a night service. And that night, it was so cool. That night was pizza night. And I already had put my money down for pizza. And uh, night games. And I went back to my bunk and laid in the top bunk just crying because of the love of God. Just praying in the Spirit. Just praying. And that's a gift for me. You know, the Bible says when you pray in an unknown tongue, you don't speak to men. So even like what I was speaking there, I was just giving praise to God. You speak to God. And it was like I had... Uh, intimacy. I had a gift. I had, I had a gift. He said, "If you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more does a father know how to give a good gift to to his children?" I felt like what I had never experienced before. I felt like a son. You know, like you get born again. You know, I, I prayed was to receive Christ or Jesus as a as a young man, maybe six years old. The Sunday teacher, she said, well, son, I, I, you've already prayed with Jesus. And I'm like, I've never made that decision, but I'm making it today. But this was different. And so anyway, um, I guess we'll just dismiss this morning. And if that's you, uh, to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And really, when you're born again, the Bible tells us that the whole, I, I love this. I love the ministry of the Holy Ghost. I love the gifts of the Spirit. 
And I think that the language of, of the ministry of the Holy Spirit is so important because we've talked about so many times language matters. To and from matter. How, how many of you know when you say, uh, I want to go to Alma, it matters you not say I'm coming from Alma. It changes everything, doesn't it? So those little words. But when you're born again, the, the Holy Ghost comes and he lives on the inside, right? On the inside. And he testifies with your spirit that you're a child of God. But he says, if you'll wait here in Jerusalem, when he went away, he says, better I go away because I'm going to send to you a helper, another comforter, and you will receive power when the Holy Spirit doesn't say goes within you. He says he rests upon you. And so to do what? To be a witness. It's a, it's a testimony. People can see it and, and you will testify of it. So the difference between the spirit within and the spirit upon, and it's important, right? Because sometimes people, anyway, praise the Lord. So that's just a little a little nugget teaching. Really, we need to get uh, some more uh, in-depth teaching on that. and It'll be such a blessing to you. Anyway, God bless you guys. We'll see you back here tonight at 630. And uh, lo- I can't wait to see you all up here. Thank you for joining us. We hope you were strengthened and encouraged by the Word of God. If you need prayer, feel free to text us at the number on the screen below. You can also send us an email to info at beyondchurch.org or submit a prayer request form on our website at beyondchurch.org. If you'd like to partner with us in preaching Jesus, you can give securely online through our app or website, or if you prefer to mail your gift, send it to the address shown below. Stay connected with us throughout the week. You can download the app for all of our latest messages and announcements, and be sure and follow us on our socials at Beyond Church. If you've never attended in person, we highly encourage you to plan a visit. You'll never regret prioritizing godly community. We love you and hope to see you soon.